Oof, oof, oof. Fourth gear. What's up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor with TDS TV and today we're in Morden and I'm going to give you guys a driving test walkthrough. So, whether you're doing your test in Morden or not, this video is going to be super useful for you because it's going to show you the kind of things and the bits that you want to look out for so that you can pass your driving test first time. Okay, so when you first get in the car, the examiner's gonna tell you that you can sit down, but don't start the engine until they tell you to. When the examiner gets in the car, they're gonna ask you a vehicle safety question, something like, how do you check your indicators are working? Or how do you check that your brakes are working? You should know the answers to these questions. If you don't know the answers, you can revise them on the gov.uk website. Click here to find it. So, we're ready to drive. The examiner's set up their sat nav and I'm parked at the back of Morden Driving Test Center. Let's take a driving test. First of all, the examiner is going to tell you when it's safe to do so, drive on. And that is the start of your driving test. For the first five minutes, you might feel a little bit anxious and a little bit nervous, but this is the time to go slow and make sure that you're remembering your key things like anticipation and planning ahead. So important at the beginning of your driving test not to try and rush the whole thing. Think of everything. There should be so much going through your head that you don't have time to think about the fact that you're on a driving test and it's scary. The lights are turning green and I'm turning left at the traffic lights going towards Morden. Hopefully if you're taking your driving test here, you've had enough time to practice and go through these roads so that you know what's coming. If you're taking your driving test in any kind of area, practice the roads that you're going to be driving on so that you're familiar with what's gonna come next. If the examiner tells you to turn left or the sat nav says in 800 yards, do something, you know what is happening in that 800 yards. So, After 800 yards, turn right. Thank you very much. 800 yards, turn right. I saw that sign there that said dual carriageway ahead. What does that mean? Dual carriageway just means that the oncoming traffic is separated from us. I'm turning right in 800 yards, so why have I gone into the left lane? 800 yards is quite a long way. I don't want anyone to undertake me, so I'm gonna take up position in the left lane, the driving lane, so that I can go back later. If the roads are a lot more busy, 400 yards, still quite a long way. If the road's very, very busy, I'm gonna move across to the right earlier. But because this road isn't very busy at all, I'm gonna think about moving across a little bit later so that I can make sure that I don't get undertaken by anyone. Remember, undertaken is when you get passed on the left. So now I'm thinking about 150 yards away, moving into the right-hand lane, checking my mirrors a good few times, and I can see now that the road is three lanes. Which lane do I need to use to turn right? The right lane. And I'm slowing down nice and early, checking all my mirrors, giving tires on tarmac to the car in front so that I'm not stopped too close, remembering your safety bubble at all times. There's no point rushing this at all. You're not gonna get any points for coming quicker or soonest. You're gonna be looking good because you're driving smoothly and safely. That's all they're interested in. So even when I'm at a red light like this, I'm just gonna chill out. I'm gonna keep thinking. I'm not gonna go to sleep. I'm still thinking about what's around the corner because I'm looking in advance. I've seen something quite important. I'll point it out to you guys in a second. Okay, so my lights turn green, checking my mirrors, moving off. As I round this bend, I'm not going too quickly. I want my steering to be in control. And as soon as I enter this road, I can see 20 miles an hour. Really important. So now I'm in a 20 zone. Listen to the next instruction. Bear left. What does that mean? So there's a road on the left. That one's right, bearing right. So I'm going to do mirror signal. This is definitely my junction. Dropping it into second gear. There's another reminder, 20 on the left. In Morden, they've recently had an update on all of the speed limits in the area. So quite a lot of the roads in Morden are now 20 miles an hour when they used to be 30 miles an hour. So you'll find local residents driving at 30 miles an hour. You can't do that. You don't have a proper driving license and you're taking your driving test. They can do things that you're not doing. It's not a good idea to follow other people. Look, 20 miles an hour might feel really slow, but it's giving you more time to think and more time to plan ahead on your driving test. So be appreciative of that. What are we gonna do for this chicane section? Checking my mirrors, dropping down a gear, slowing the car down so I can be super neat, super tidy, 12 miles an hour. We don't get any points for speed. So I'm going slow and smooth. What are we doing here? Checking my mirrors as I go around that lady with the door open, planning well ahead. I can see another island in the middle of the road. What are we gonna do for that? Checking the mirror. Yards, turn right. 
and moving around nice and slow, nice and steady. Super narrow on this road, so I don't want to go too fast. What if someone walked out from one of the parked cars or one of the doors opened, car doors opened? That would be a problem, a big problem. So we're turning right here. Okay, crossroads here. And I need to make sure that I let any oncoming traffic go first. Setting off nice and slowly with a mirror check and smooth steering. This road's still 20 miles an hour. Not taking it too fast over the bumps. At this point on your driving test, the examiner might say, pull over on the right and you can ignore the driveways on this occasion. So, mirror check, signal, moving across, nice and early, nice and quickly, getting into a good position next to the curb. Handbrake, neutral, cancel the signal. Remember, nothing happens quickly on your driving test. Give yourself enough time to think, correct yourself if anything's going wrong. So next, reverse back two car spaces. Now this on paper isn't difficult. Reverse gear, P, prepare, O, check around and I can see a few cars coming towards me. I've got to weigh up the balance now. Are they close to me? Are they gonna pass closely? If they're gonna pass my vehicle closely, I'm gonna stop and let them go first. So now they've gone past, I'm gonna keep up that good observation, keeping an eye on the mirror so I don't get too close to the curb. Okay, I'm looking not just at what's around me, what's on the curb. Any pedestrians, any bikes, any motorbikes, keeping an eye on that mirror. That's about two car spaces, neutral, handbrake, and relax. Next, the examiner is gonna tell you to drive off again, move off into the flow of traffic. So, I'm not gonna rush this. My maneuver's done, but I've still got to drive safely. So I can see that the road is completely clear. Again, not taking this too quickly. You can never check the blind spot too much. Why not? If you've checked the blind spot and then you look away and you do something else, you need to recheck that blind spot because now that information is still. It needs to be maximum one second between you checking the blind spot and moving off. That is really important. So here, what are we thinking about this road? Remember, you've always got to plan ahead, anticipate, see what's coming next. It's a blind corner. The road's really narrow. Meeting situation. And I was ready for it, so I didn't have to react too quickly, making sure I'm checking my mirrors. On a road like this, yards. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Okay, great. Then turn right. Roundabout and then turn, turn right. So on the road like this, at the speed I'm going, a cyclist could easily be keeping up with me and overtaking. So as I'm moving in and out of passing places, I need to be looking in my mirrors. So this Cross roundabout, the roundabout and take the second, second exit. exit. Then turn right. Take the second exit on the roundabout. I'm going to drop it down a gear, checking to my right and I'm gonna go round the outside of the roundabout, not signaling left until I've passed the first exit, and leaving there. Excellent. That wasn't difficult. We don't need to make it difficult. Practice makes perfect. So turning right, signaling nice and early. I can see already, look, 40 signs. So the next road that I'm going onto has a speed limit of 40 miles an hour. Let's see how we're gonna do this crossroads. So the motorbikes made it a little bit difficult, here, but I'm making sure I'm not in anyone's way. I'm leaving everyone enough room, keeping my signal on if it cancels, that light's turning red. So I'm gonna set off. All right, 20 miles now, I'm gonna accelerate confidently to show that I've spotted and I understand the speed limit. And then just wait for the next instruction. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit left on the roundabout first exit. On paper, that's not too difficult, but let's look at the signage and any other clues that we've got around. So on the left, we've got a blue sign, bus lane. Seven till 10, four till seven, it's eight minutes past one. So I'm gonna move into that bus lane. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. I can keep that signal on because I'm taking the first exit on the roundabout. And then waiting patiently, I'm not gonna try and rush now or go to sleep. I'm gonna keep focused, nice and calm. I can see if I look around the roundabout, there's not just these traffic lights, there's another set of traffic lights. So because I'm planning ahead, I'm not gonna miss anything. If those lights turn red as my lights turn green, which I've seen happen, I'm gonna be ready to stop at them. So here's my lights turning green, and there's the lights ahead turning red. So I'm not gonna accelerate too hard, 
I'm keeping it nice and smooth so that we can come to a slow stop. What if the car behind hasn't seen that the lights are turning red and they're accelerating hard? Because I'm braking smoothly and sh not sharply, I am able to give them warning in advance. So next, 30 miles an hour speed limit. Checking my mirrors as I move around the road. This is not a difficult road to drive on. Literally just look ahead and drive. If you're starting to panic on your driving test, here's a top tip. Don't start overthinking it. All you need to do is look ahead and drive. You've been practicing for so long. You should have been practicing for so long. You should have done enough driving hours now that driving is starting to become automatic. So all you need to do is look ahead on the road and your body will do the rest of the work for you. When you're walking, you don't think, oh, I need to get to upstairs you just think upstairs and then you go there you're not thinking left foot right foot left foot right foot you just go there where you're thinking of going it should be by the time you pass your driver test the same for driving so red light coming up ahead I'm braking really early where are we going next straight on so stopping in a decent position behind the car in front tires on tarmac traffic lights turning green I can hear an ambulance and I saw it was coming down that way so I'm gonna set off cautiously so that they can cut in front of us there it is they've gone past so there's me setting off always checking my mirrors after 300 yards turn left okay good information 300 yards is quite a long way away so I'm not gonna start thinking about signaling but because I'm keeping a focused eye 20 miles an hour so I need to drop down to 20 or below before I get to that sign. If I'm passing that sign at more than 20 miles an hour, then I'm speeding. So here we go, turning left, mirror, signal, not too difficult. Position, speed, dropping it down to zero because there's a red light, stopping right at the line and wait. Not falling asleep, remember? So keeping focused, checking my mirrors and drive on. Nice and slow around the bends. We're not gonna get any points for going really fast and speeding around bends. Imagine your driving examiner. They're not Lewis Hamilton. They're not gonna appreciate speed. They're gonna appreciate a nice smooth drive. Imagine how many driving tests they do a day. Loads. They, if everybody drove them at 100 miles an hour around Morden Test Street, like a racetrack, they're going to go back with whiplash. They're not going to be comfortable. So they're going to super appreciate you if you're going to give them a really smooth ride. That's a top tip. So we're just thinking about appropriate speed on this road. The appropriate speed I don't think is 20 miles an hour. We're passing these parked cars really closely. Now perhaps the examiner might say, in a safe place, pull up on the left. So let's do that now. Handbrake neutral, cancel the signal. The examiner's gonna ask you about five or six times to pull over on the left. Maybe in a safe place, maybe behind a vehicle, maybe next to a lamppost. Wherever they ask you to pull over, make sure that you do it safely, mirror, signal, move. They won't probably be asking you to pull over on the left for any reason other than just to see how you, well you do it and then pull away again just to see your technique. Are you checking the blind spot? Are you pulling away safely in a safe gap? So move off when you're ready. And remember, listen to the words, move off when you're ready. If you need to just get your thoughts together, have a sip of water, take a deep breath, calm down, do that. And then when you're ready, drive on again. So prepare, observe, signal, handbrake and move. Cancel the signal, keep driving. Twenty miles an hour at this point because there's nothing After coming towards me. Yards, turn right. I am straddling the middle of the road because there's nothing coming towards me. If there was something to come towards me, I would drop my speed significantly and move closer to the left. How am I gonna deal with this width restrictor? I know very few test routes that don't cover a width restrictor. I've dropped into first gear, no gas, five miles an hour walking it through there. I'll be honest, I could probably get through that width restrictor in third gear. I would not do that on a driving Turn test. Right. There's absolutely no need and it's not showing anything apart from you're a little bit reckless and not taking your driving test seriously. So we're turning right here. Nice and smooth, pushing and pulling. Looking at the sign ahead. 100 yards, turn left. 
give way to oncoming vehicles. That one's really important. Priority on a driving test is so important. If you don't give priority when it's due, you will fail your driving test. So we're turning left here. Nice signaling position, about six car lengths back from the junction. Turning left, nice and smooth, hugging, hugging the left of the corner. Checking my mirrors as I drive around. Here again, the examiner's probably gonna tell you to pull up on the left behind the white car. Let's do that now. Or pull up on the left about one car length away from the white Ford, something like that. Next, this is the end of independent driving. I'm gonna direct you from here. So this signals the end of independent driving. I've turned the sat nav off and the examiner will now be giving you verbal commands of where to go next. So you can think that there's probably been about 20 minutes of your driving test gone and you are inside the last third. Don't start letting your mind wander now though. You must keep focused. Planning ahead and anticipation is key, so key. If you catch a situation like this, keep calm. It's not a race to the finish. We don't need to keep going. If the road is blocked or there's no way to get out, we're not going to rush. There's no point rushing. Use this as a brilliant, wow, thanks moment because I can chill, take a deep breath and relax for a second while starting to gather my thoughts and plan ahead. So I think we've got enough room now to move on, checking my mirrors and let's go. Okay, so turn left at the end of the road, please. Mirror signal, position, speed into first gear, looking right, looking left. I've heard a few people who are getting lessons from friends, family, mum and dad say, if you're coming up to a giveaway line, you must stop. Now that's incorrect. A give way line means give way. A stop line means stop. So if there's nothing coming and you're at a give way line, it would be inappropriate to stop. You've just hesitated. The car behind you can see exactly what you can see. We're not trying to do some weird driving on our driving test. We're trying to drive like everybody else. It's an audition to get a driving license, a pink one, like everybody else on the road. So don't start making up rules. Don't start doing weird stuff. If you're learning with friends, family, parents, drive how they drive. Maybe not how they drive exactly. Don't start making up rules like, you must stop at give way lines. Don't do that. It's hesitation, you will get marked down for it if you stop and there's absolutely nothing coming in a clear gap. Okay, at the end of the road, turn left please. All right, great. Still 20 miles an hour speed limit, mirror, signal, spotting all the signs, give way line ahead. Looking in advance, there's nothing coming. I would not stop at this point at all. Keeping on going at the roundabout, take the first left. No problemo, mirror, signal. Because I'm looking ahead and planning, I can see that 30 sign. It's really important to make sure that you're looking out for signs. It is so important to make sure that you're looking out for signs on your driving test. If you're not looking out for signs, you're gonna miss some vital pieces of information. It's important to remember that the signs are in your peripheral vision. They're at the sides, they're on the pavement, so they're not there if you're only looking straight ahead, dead ahead. You need to be scanning the whole road. If you're not looking at the pavements, how are you gonna spot pedestrians about to step off the curb? Your whole driving test should be like a hazard perception test where you're looking absolutely everywhere. Ooh, 40 miles an hour, let's go. Confident acceleration. Don't be scared to put the pedal down as long as you're changing gear at the right times. Looking out for any more signs, pedestrian crossing ahead. Is there anyone waiting that might have pressed the button? Remember to anticipate and plan ahead all the time. There's my 40 miles an hour. So I'm gonna relax into that speed. Because I'm taking my driving test, I've practiced this a lot. If a road in your test area goes up to 40 miles an hour, you should have practiced and be confident at driving at 40 miles an hour. If you're not, and this is the first time or the first couple of times you're doing it, you're not helping yourself. Imagine doing a maths exam and you've only practiced trigonometry once. That would be silly. Same thing for your driving test. Right, so at the traffic lights, turn right. Checking my mirrors, signaling the road's not too busy, but we're coming up to the traffic lights now. I wanna latch onto the back of this black car, the back of the stream of traffic. Probably not a good time to signal right at the moment. So I've moved into my lane and canceled the signal. I'm gonna put it on again a little bit later. And because I want everyone behind me to know that I'm turning right and I might be a hold up, I'm gonna put my signal on maybe a little bit early. So green lights, I'm gonna anticipate that they might change to red. 
and slow my car down. They didn't change, so that's fine. I've spotted my right turn arrow. There it is, lights are turning red and I can see everyone slowing down, so I'm gonna start moving. This commentary should be in your head the whole time you're doing a driving test. You need to be commentating so that you can spot everything. Even if you do it out loud, who cares if the examiner thinks you're silly, you won't ever meet them again and you will have passed your driving test. Next, at the roundabout, turn left, it's the second exit. Do I signal now? Not gonna signal yet. I'm gonna use the outside of the roundabout as I get to the first exit, checking my mirror, signal, and nice and gently steering off. I've seen people do some really weird stuff on this roundabout, taking it at warp speed. Don't do that. Why would you wanna go around fast? Doesn't prove anything, doesn't get you any extra marks. Okay, letting the bus go. I was planning for a meeting situation, so no drama there at all. Planning for another meeting situation. Look at that car's body language though. They're moving across and letting us go first. Give them a little wave. You can give that hand signal on your driving test. You can give the hand signal to say thank you. That's perfectly okay. What you can't do ever is give any kind of giving way hand signals. Anything like that is fully not allowed. The only hand signal you can give is thanks and even then you don't need to say thanks. The examiner will say thanks for you if needs be. So here we're going straight ahead. This junction is tricky. I'm going to name it. It's Green Lane, Love Lane. If you're driving in Morden, I suggest you go around here a little bit and familiarise yourself with this set of dual carriageways. There's one here and one that we just crossed. The speed limit's just gone up to 30 miles an hour. I've seen it. I've seen the speed limit because I drive around here a lot. If you drive around here a lot before your driving test, you're going to be as confident as I am. Is it appropriate to go 30 miles an hour? Let's remember, the maximum speed is not always the appropriate speed. I'm at 26 miles an hour, and I feel that that's a good speed. Bus is pulling out. Duh. Do I need to let the bus go first? Let's refer to the highway code. <sighs> yes, I need to let the bus go first. Why? Because it's in the highway code. And you, taking your driving test, have read the highway code, right? I would suggest reading the highway code. It's really, really, really dull and badly written, but it's got all of the essential rules that you need to know to pass your driving test and learn to drive. All drivers should have read the highway code. Probably about here we're gonna be asked to pull up on the left in a safe place. Let's do that now. Keep checking the left mirror. Keep that signal on so people don't think I've changed my mind. Not stopping too close to the car in front. This is something that people do a lot and I encourage you not to. If you stop too close to the car in front, what do you have to do then? Reverse, you've just given yourself more work on your driving test. So make sure that you give the car in front a nice bit of gap and a nice bit of distance so that you can pull away more easily. So I'm just waiting for the road to be clear. There's no point doing my observation because I can see there's loads of cars coming. So I'm just gonna zen, take a deep breath. There's another car coming behind. So I'm just gonna chill for another second, watching those pedestrians and kids on bikes. I can see there crossing the road. Okay, let's do it now. They've crossed. There's no more cars coming behind me. Taking the blind spot a couple of times. Why not? Little bit of traffic up ahead. When you're in traffic, don't stop too close to the car in front. How many times have I said don't stop too close to the car in front? It's a lot. But I promise you, this is something really important. Now I took control of that situation there, I slowed down. I wasn't sure if that blue van was gonna let me go or not. So I took control of the situation. It's no one's priority because there's hazards on both sides, but the only way that you can take control of a meeting situation is by giving priority. We're not trying to be hesitant, but if you're not sure, it's a good idea to stop because if they don't let you go and you go at the same time, you're gonna get into trouble. Checking my mirror. Nice and slow, no rush. Giving cars on the left a big lot of room. There's a whole box on the driving test report for clearance to obstructions. If you're too close to park cars, and this is such a common mistake, if you're too close to park cars, the examiner's gonna start to get nervous and start to think about reaching across. Up here, we're gonna turn right on the roundabout. What I mean by reaching across is reaching across to your steering wheel. You don't want the examiner to reach across to your steering wheel. If you need any help with driving on your driving test, that's gonna be a fail. Okay, making sure it's safe, only giving way to the right. Now this one, I'm not gonna cut the roundabout completely, but I put two wheels on it. The junction's not really big enough for me to get myself all the way around it. I'm not gonna try and go all the way around it because it's gonna be misleading. If you haven't 
got the hang of mini roundabouts yet, don't take your driving test, go and practice some more mini roundabouts in somewhere like, if you're in more than Tooting, Tooting's got a lot of really fast, good roundabouts to practice, go for it. So, we can see that we're coming back to the test center now. Here's the Asda on the left. If you realize, oh my God, I'm coming back to the test center. I haven't made any stupid mistakes. Oh my God, I think I've passed my, stop. You're now not concentrating. Your driving test is not over until the examiner tells you to, to turn the engine off. So make sure that you're still concentrating and you're still alert until the very last minute. These traffic lights are a notorious crossroads. Make sure that you're concentrating until the very last minute so that you can perform up to 100%. Don't let yourself down by, by not concentrating, by going into a, into a conversation with yourself. The only thing that you should be doing is planning ahead and anticipation. Commentary, if you like. Commentate, what's next and how am I gonna deal with it? That's the only thing that you need to be thinking, the whole driving test, what's next? Okay, traffic lights, what am I gonna do about it? If the lights are red, I'm gonna slow down. Where's the car in front? How far behind them am I going to stop? Always planning though for what might happen next. If the lights are red, the lights might change to green. If the lights change to green, what are you going to do? Pick an appropriate gear and carry on. Depends how many cars in front. So much to think about. Even on such a simple, let's go ahead at a crossroads type junction. So much to think about. So if you're falling asleep and you're starting to converse with yourself about being nearly back at the test centre, trust me, it's going to go wrong. So focus. Here we go. Checking my mirrors as I move off. The examiner is now gonna ask you to pull up somewhere. Remember your test isn't over. So you might pull up on the left, you might turn left into the next side road. You might pull up on the left after the junction. I'm gonna pull up on the left in the side road. So let's turn left, always making sure my mirrors are checked. I check mirrors more than you need to. Why? Because anything might be there. Anything might change, the picture in the mirror might change. I'm gonna pull up on the left just along here and stop. Nice and slowly, I didn't rush that at all. Let me just put that down because I can't see anything. Handbrake, neutral, signal cancel. Thank you, switch off the engine. Woo, that's the end of your driving test. Let me just count up the marks. The examiner's now gonna chill out for a second. This takes about five seconds, 10 seconds max, and then they're gonna give you the result. If you've passed, congratulations. If you haven't passed, the examiner will explain why, and that will give you some things to work on with your instructor, with your friends and family. The examiners are experts. If they've said that you failed, it's for a good reason. There is no quota. A lot of people say this, oh, I failed because it's a Friday and they passed too many people on a Monday. That's not the case. If you failed, it's for a good reason. Think about it like this. If you haven't passed your driving test, you must have done something. If you had done a perfect drive, like I did, obvs, then you would have given them no excuse to give you. How could you fail if you didn't do anything wrong? So take, take it on board, take it on the chin. It sucks, it sucks so hard to be told that you failed at something that you've practiced so hard for, but after about four or five weeks, once you receive that pink card in the post, after your second test or third test, whenever you pass, the first test where you failed is gonna be a funny story, trust me. Keep working, keep persevering, and you will pass your driving test. We play this video or watch some of my other driving test walkthrough talkthroughs. That's it for now, guys. Follow me on Instagram at Francis the Instructor. Follow us on Instagram at tds.tv, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.